So this is lesson one in the iOS learning path. This lesson is all about understanding Xcode. Now it's not possible for you to understand everything that Xcode does in just a few short minutes, um, but we're going to go over some basics. And the most important thing to understand Xcode, the most important thing to understand about Xcode is its fundamental purpose. When I say fundamental purpose, I mean what is the core thing that Xcode does? And there'll be a lot of different opinions and a lot of different arguments about what that is. But as far as we're concerned, the fundamental thing that Xcode does is it compiles source code into an application. So the word compiling confuses some people, but let's jump over here to dictionary.com and see what the word compile means. So compile means a few different things. It means to put together documents or materials into a book or work. It means um, gathering different information, gather to gather. Um, and in computers, it means to translate a computer, pro com a computer program, excuse me, from a high level language into another language, usually machine language. So let's try to get our head around what that means. Really all we're saying is, is when, when we use Xcode to compile an application, we're telling Xcode to take all of our source files and remember, our source code files are what we downloaded from our control panel, or they're source code files that we wrote by hand, or they're source code files that we got from somebody else. We're asking Xcode to take all of those source code files and compile them into one file called an app. In a Windows environment, that would be called an executable, but since we're talking about iOS here and mobile programming for iPhone and iPad, we call it an app. So fundamentally, Xcode's purpose is to compile our project source code, which is written in one language, into another language. And we call that an app. So how does it do that? So how it does it is way beyond the, the um, scope of this discussion. But what is not beyond the scope of this discussion is how we ask it to do that. So we ask it to compile, really, by clicking this Run button. When you click this Run button, it says build and then run the current scheme. What you're saying when you click this run button is, hey Xcode, compile this program and then launch it in one of these devices. So really every time you open up Xcode, what you're going to do is choose a device and then click the run button. And when you do, you'll see the little message here, the status window it says running Monterey Harbor on iPhone simulator. That means compiling the project into an executable, well, not an executable, into an app, and then installing it on the iPhone simulator, just like it would an iPhone device, and then running it. So that compiled process, that, that process of compiling, is all done for you by Xcode. And so that's the simplified explanation of what Xcode is fundamentally for. But let's explore some of the other options inside of Xcode so that we can see actually how we use it um, in some different ways. And so this is our um, sample application that we built. It's running in the simulator. I'll make it smaller so we can see it. And the way that we launched it is we just compiled it. Let me change the scale of this so we can see the whole thing. Let me zoom it to 50% size. There we go. So there's our little app running in the simulator. So, let's forget about that for a minute and go back to Xcode. So a lot of the time that you spend in Xcode is with this um, Build Settings screen. So I click the project name and then I click Build Settings and you see all kinds of build settings. And really what build settings are, are instructions for the compiler. In other words, before we run or compile our project, whether that be for the simulator or for the App Store or something like that, Sometimes we need to adjust these build settings. Most of the time, the only thing you'll ever be adjusting is this code signing identity. This tutorial um, doesn't cover code signing and what that's for, but I will touch on it just for a minute because it's important. If you're not a registered iOS developer, you can't install software on devices, only on the simulator. So when you compile and run for a simulator, you don't have to code sign. So the code signing identity will be set to don't code sign. If you were to select a device, like if I were to connect my device to, to my computer and then run it to install it on my device, you would have to code sign it with this thing called a provisioning profile that you get from the Apple developer portal. So again, we won't talk about that, but just understand that in Xcode, 
to set the provisioning profile or to set the code citing identity, we would choose the project, then build settings, and then we would set the code signing here. So let's explore a little bit more about how you navigate around Xcode. Um, on the left here we have a project. We can use the, uh, in all the project files, it's kind of a project explorer. We can use these view icons to maximize or minimize the project files on the left. We can show another pane along the bottom here that I call the debugger or the console. This is very, very useful and when we get into the lesson about debugging, um, this lower console, this lower um, text area is really useful. So we can hide that and show that using the view button, which is up in the top right. So in essence, you'll either be hiding and showing your project as necessary, and hiding and showing the console as necessary, and then exploring your project files, setting the build settings, using the um, build settings tab in the summary, and you know you have summary, info, and build settings, and then clicking the run button, which compiles your project into an application. So that's the basics about Xcode, and the key, one of the key things to remember is it's not very complicated um, in terms of how you navigate it. There's a lot of choices that are advanced and do confuse some people, but given enough time, it will make a lot of sense. So the next thing that we need to talk about um, in, in regards to Xcode is how it manages all these files. So this tends to confuse some people, so we're going we're gonna to do a little exploration here and show you um, some basics about how Xcode manages the files. So if you remember when we downloaded our application, we just downloaded um, a zip file, a directory. We unzipped it, and we ended up with all of our source code files. So right now I have um, Finder open in this little window, and then I have Xcode running behind it. So I'm going to minimize, I'm going to make Xcode smaller so that we can see both of these at the same time, and just to give you a better idea of how this works. So this is the Xcode project on the left, and this is Finder on the right. So when we look at the, the project files in Xcode on the left, the directories here don't exactly match the directories in the download. So if you look in the download, we have btart, and over in the project we have btart. We have btconfig, we have btconfig, we have btcore, btcore. But you'll see a couple of different files or directories in the download that you don't see in Xcode. And if you remember from the first tutorial, um, when, we, when we first opened Xcode and we first opened this download, we did not have the BT plugins folder in, in Xcode, but we did have it in our download. And if you, if you remember, we drug this folder from the download, from the download into Xcode and then we dropped it into the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this plugins folder from our project and so that we can kind of start over. So I'm going to select it. Um, I just two-finger tapped or command ta um, control tapped it. And I'm going to say delete and ignore this for a minute. Um, I just want to get us back to the way we were. So this is how the project looked when we first downloaded it. And we took this BT plugins folder from our um, unzipped archive and we just drug it into Xcode and when we did that we confirmed that we wanted to add these project or add these files to Xcode we said finish so what we're doing is we're creating a reference inside of Xcode to all these files a reference or a pointer to all these files to our downloaded directory now we can add any project file to, to Xcode. We could have drug something from our desktop or from another folder, but it's, it's important to stay organized when you're doing development. And so what you'll want to do is for images and documents and video and sound, when you save these files on your computer, you'll want to add them to these directories and then add the projects to, or the project files to Xcode. That way the references are always pointed to the same um, directory and you don't have files all over the place on your computer. So this file in Xcode exists in this directory because we added it to the project. So you'll end up adding images and audio and video to your project. Um, and the, the key message here is you want to add them to your um, directory that you downloaded so that, or your project directories that you downloaded so that all of your project source files are always in um, this parent folder. So that's kind of the lesson there. So the next thing that we want to talk about is the application that we compiled. Remember when we compiled and we made an app? Where does Xcode put that app? 
um, sometimes it's necessary to, to find that application. Where is the actual file? So if you did a little Google search um, and you wanted to, to ask um, Xcode, hey, where is this file? What they would tell you is that it's in your computer under username, library, application support, blah, 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 big complicated path. So if I go to David Book on my computer and I look for the, a folder called library, I don't have a library. And that's a little odd. This is something that I just discovered um, recently when I upgraded OS 10 to 10.7. They now hide the library. So you may or may not see a library folder um, in your user account on your computer. Again, we don't necessarily need to do this, um, but I think it's interesting to, um, to know where Xcode puts these compiled files. So here's a little trick um, to show the library folder, which is now hidden. And I just Googled show hidden library folder, and you'll see um, show user library. Here's a little tip, and you can Google it and do the same thing. I just said, Where's my, why is library folder hidden? So I'm going to open up the terminal app. I'm going to type in terminal in my spotlight. Um, and open up terminal. So here's a command line. And I'm just going to type in this code right here. I'm going to copy it um, and put that in the terminal to unhide my library. That's all I've done. So now when I go back to um, Finder and I select my name, now I can see my library. And again, the only reason we're using this little shortcut to show our library or to unhide our library is so that we can find where Xcode put this app. Um, and and it, some other interesting things. So I'm going to go to uh, my name, then library, then I'm going to go to, um, let's see if I can remember this, I think it's application support, yeah, application support, then iPhone simulator, which is, where's iPhone simulator, right here. You'll see all the different versions of all the different iPhone simulators I have. I'm using 5.1, so I'll select that, and then I'll select applications, and this folder right here, this application, is the application we installed on the device. So Xcode gave it a unique ID, that's that big long ugly number, and there is the app. So this is the actual file that was created when we compiled it. So again thinking back um, like on a Windows machine this would be MontereyHarbor.exe, but this is the application's um, the, uh, file, they call this a binary, and this is the result of the compiling process. So if you ever want to find any of the simulator files, you can do that. Um, it's your username, um, library, you may have to unhide library, application support, iPhone simulator, and then the version you're using, and then the application. So this will fill up with applications as you install them on your simulator. Um, which takes us to the next topic. There must be an easier way to find this app. And things, um, questions are reasonable such as, what if I compile an application for the App Store? Do I need to now find this app and upload it and all that kind of stuff? So fortunately Xcode makes it quite a bit easier than that. I just went through some complicated ways to show you where the files were saved on your computer. So Xcode has this tool called the Organizer. And what the Organizer does is it allows us to manage projects. Right now we just have one project in our Xcode environment called Monterey Harbor and this project list on the left will stack up and you'll get a long list of projects. So with projects you have archives. We don't have any archives right now but the concept is pretty simple. When you're done working with your project and you want to prepare it for um, distribution you're going to use Xcode to create an archive and then it will show up in the organizer. And then that archive is what you will um, process or upload to the App Store when you want to begin distributing it. We're going to cover some details about that process in a different video, but just understand that you're not going to have to dig through your computer to find all these crazy files um, in order to make iOS apps. I just wanted to show you how Xcode worked. So in summary, um, what we did is we explored Xcode and we talked about how Xcode manages all the different files. We talked about um, these build settings and what um, compiling means and how Xcode compiles um, project files for us into a, a binary or an application file, which incidentally we saw ends in the extension .app. So that is the binary that we upload to Apple and install on devices. 
Um, we explored um, a couple of the different views and we didn't talk about the debug console but we showed you where it was um, and we opened up the, the organizer. Um, heck, we even showed you a little cheat and a little hack to show you um, your library um, folder if your library is not showing because um, we want to sometimes dig through the Xcode files or the uh, simulator files if, um, if we want to get a little, a little into our project. So that concludes lesson one um, of the iOS learning path, understanding Xcode, and we will see you next time.